Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out It's a Long Way to the Top. If you want a rock and roll by ACDC, one of Bon Scott's finest hours. Fantastic song, really great kind of beginnery tune, but I'm going to go into a little bit of detail for the more advanced players as well. I think this might have been one of the very first ACDC songs I ever learned, and there's some really interesting parts going on, particularly the interplay between uh, Malcolm and Angus's parts. You know, it can be a really interesting thing to check out. So I'm going to show you both parts, and a couple of times I'm going to show you how you might try and mix them together if you plan on your own. So uh, let's get to a close-up and check out how to play it. So that's the main riff there. It happens a lot in this song, so definitely one that you've got to get down. It's all based around an open A power chord. So open fifth string, first finger bar in the second fret of the fourth string, and the third string. Okay? Now the very first time there's a little hammer-on where the first finger starts off does a little hammer on so we have a muted hit okay there's quite a few muted hits in this as well and when you do that you want to rest fingers two three and four lightly down on the strings so you get that little muted touch going on there okay so we have the little muted hit then we play strings five four and three open and hammer the first finger down It just happens that very first time. The rest of the time you just play the chord straight instead of with the open strings ringing out there. So Then we've got an up pick, okay? So we're picking from the third string. So third string, fourth string, and fifth string only. Okay, then we've got two muted hits, which will both be down. Then the chord, which will be a down pick as well. Then a muted hit, and then the chord again, and that's the beginning of the new cycle. So the interesting thing here really is all about having that up pick, because all of the rest are down picks. So we have this four and one and two and three, 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 four and really actually hard to do it slowly. I keep uh, going to do up picks where I shouldn't, but uh, once you get it up to speed... It's almost like you just have a little hang there. There it hangs. And then you go back into doing this all down picks. So really, that hammer-on happens a few other times in the songs as well, but uh, it's just that really that first... Okay, now Angus comes in with this really cool... little riff there that just hangs out. So uh, it's the open D string, hammer on the second fret with the first finger, then play the open G string, the third string. Then second finger reaches over to the third fret of the fifth string, flick off, then the chord. And then it just holds for a whole four bars. I need to be a little bit louder and have more distortion to make that chord ring that long. So the rhythm of it is three e and four and a one, two, three e and four and a one. Okay, which in uh, up to speed, if I'm mixing it up with the other bit. It's a little bit weird, that rhythm, but again, listening to it, making sure you're aware of the rhythm and you can do it slowly. Three and four and a one, two, three and four and a one. You definitely want to practice that so you get the feeling of... You know, and then you're just holding that chord. Most times if I'm playing it by myself, I'll put it in there like I did at the intro, just as kind of mixed in with the, uh, with the riff there every four bars. But you don't have to do it that way. So, into the verses. Now, the verses is exactly the same. Same riff as that we had in the intro. Now, what's interesting here is Angus comes in with a nice little, almost Chuck Berry style... Uh, 
which is just happening one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four, which is the first finger here barring the thinnest two strings at the fifth fret. One and two, three, four, one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four. Okay? But if you want, you might like to try and add that in to the Malcolm part as well. Okay, so I'm using my little finger to bar the, the two notes there at the fifth fret, and then I'm and one and two, three, four, and one and two. So I'm using that upstroke before, where it's just quite little. Now it's going all of the way up to the thinner strings, and then on beat three as well, pushing right through. Okay, you don't have to do that. If you're in, playing in a band, you definitely want to separate them because it does sound cool, but a lot of times we find ourselves playing by ourselves and uh, you know, it's nice to be able to get those two parts in there because it does make it sound like, quite like the record. So uh, into the chorus. Now the chorus, we've got an A chord. And then we've got a G. A D with an F sharp bass. And then back to A. Now a little note here on ACDC stuff, I tend to play again the D chord with the F sharp bass played with my thumb. Okay, so I'm play using the thumb to play the second fret and mute the fifth string, then open second, third, second. But what I think happens in ACDC is that Angus tends to play... Okay, so he's just, he's using first finger to play the F sharp and mute the fifth string, open D, second finger on the note A there, second fret, third string, and he's not playing the thinner string, the thinner string's muted. So I think Angus goes, and Malcolm goes G to D, regular, without the F sharp bass. I think that's what's happening from uh, trying to listen to the separate speakers, but again, I, I normally play because I can use the thumb, you know, I can do it, so why not to explore that idea and it sounds then like the whole recording if I'm playing by myself. But again, if you're playing in a band, I'd recommend one guitar player doing that D with an F sharp bass and the other guitar player doing G to regular D and back to A. The riff, one, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one. A little slower. One, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one. Again, one, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Okay, so all those chords, we call that a push when it comes uh, an eighth note early. One, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. All of those chords are pushed. And it does that chord sequence twice with the um, for two bars after the uh, A, G, D with an F sharp bass and back to the A. Then we've got this other cool bit where you play an A chord and it's held for two whole bars. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we've got this another great ACDC chord. This is a D chord with an A bass. Nothing on the thicker string. Open, fourth, second fret. 3rd fret, 2nd fret. Okay, it's basically a C-shaped bar chord, way of playing a D chord, but we leave the open A there. Okay, it's really, really nice chord, that. So, and there's a little where you do down, up, down. And that last down is the one that comes on the beat. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and a 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, G, Two, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so again, the A is held for two bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and a one. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. G, two, three, four, and. Two, three, four, and one. Okay, now I'm going to show you the bagpipe part. I never thought I'd be saying that in my life, that I'm going to show you how to play the bagpipes on guitar, but uh, not many bands have a bagpipe player, so it's good to know how to play that little riff there. Um, it's this. 
Okay, so we're just starting off with the first finger in the seventh fret of the fourth string, third finger in the uh, ninth fret of the third string, and the open A. We just want those three strings. And the first part, you really, it's just like you're playing the intro. The it's exactly the same pattern of that little upstroke on the and after one. Okay, then we introduce the little melody with the little finger reaching up to the 11th fret of the third string. Take it off, lift off the third finger and press down the first finger, so you've got a little bar, and then put third finger back down. Using all down picks for that. Very last part. So leaving the first finger doing the little bar. Third finger goes back on, off, the little finger reaches to the 11th fret of the fourth string. And if you want to bring it back again, if it's cycling, we just play again with the little finger, then the bar, put third finger back down. Let me play it through once nice and slow. Just at the end of that part, it's doing the G, D with the F sharp bass, and the A. There's one more little riff I want to show you, just because it sounds really cool if you've got a two guitar band thing going on. It's this little... Uh of course, the high one's normally played by the bagpipe, but uh, we just start here with the first finger in the fifth fret of the third string, hammer down the th second finger, in the sixth fret of the third string, and then first finger is barring the thinnest two strings at the fifth fret. And we play that twice. Three, four, and one, and two. 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 And then if you want to do the octave kind of thing, you just move it up exactly 12 frets. Okay, it should take you up here to the uh, 17th fret. I hope you enjoy playing Long Way to the Top. It really is an all-time classic ACDC song. Great fun to play and lots of little parts to explore. One other thing I want to mention that I think is a really, really big deal in this tune is listening to the individual guitar parts again. I know I've mentioned it before, but listening individually to the left and right speakers, particularly at the end of this song, there's some really, really cool stuff going on between the two guitars. Uh, Malcolm seems to be playing just a simple... <laughs> Like one and two, three and four, one and two, three and four, with a little mute in between. And Angus is playing this. And the two things together just really, really sound great, I think. So uh, Angus's part there is uh, just a regular A again, but putting your second finger down the third fret of the fifth string and then lifting it off. One and two and three, four and one and and that three and four is just moving the second finger over to the thicker string, the third fret of the sixth string. One and two and three, four and one and two, three and four. One and two and three, four and one and two, three and four. 
it's just, I mean, it's genius the way those two guys work together. You know, it's, it's simple parts, but the way they kind of, what they sound like when they're weaving together is just uh, really awesome. So definitely check that out in this song. If you're in a two guitar band, do separate those parts off. If you play mostly by yourself, it can be quite a fun little challenge to try and mix those little parts together into one guitar part. So uh, have a lot of fun with that one. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.